I've been waiting for a while to get this uh, old refrigerator here uh, over to the machine shop so that I can take it apart. It's finally here, and this fridge, I'm going to remove the compressor and build a uh, high-pressure air system from it in this video. In this particular uh, refrigerator, uh, the compressor still runs, but uh, the fridge isn't cooling because all of the refrigerant seems to have uh, leaked out over the years. This thing's pretty rusty and uh, nasty around the other side of the fridge, the front of it, but the compressor itself runs, so I'm hoping that it'll be alright. One of the main things about salvaging a working compressor is getting the wiring figured out and followed. In this compressor here, we have a red wire and a white wire. These will probably be uh, the 120 volt AC that runs the compressor. We also have two black wires coming out from the uh, starter relay box. And they go up to a uh, capacitor that's hidden in the corner. This capacitor is going to have to be left wired to the compressor, and it'll remove from the fridge with the uh, looks like a uh, quarter inch uh, hex nut I got to take off, and I'll have the capacitor out of there. If the compressor uses a cap, You've got to recover it and keep it in the circuit. I won't even be uh, cutting the wires to this capacitor. I don't need to. Uh, it's just remove the one bolt and the uh, cap will be attached to the compressor by its two black wires. This particular compressor has a water evaporating uh, pan on top of the compressor. This will have to be removed. It looks like it's held on by a single quarter twenty hex nut that's right now in the middle of the screen. So I'll be removing that. Also, I'm going to have to cut the uh, suction and pressure side lines, and I'll cut them uh, a fair way out from the compressor so I have a bunch to work with. Last thing to do will of course to be free the uh, compressor from its little base in the refrigerator, but this one just uses little uh, spring clips like that, so it'll be easy to get out. Well, I'll do some of these steps that I've just talked about, and then I'll uh, pick up the video again when I'm ready to uh, lift the compressor out. This compressor is now ready to be lifted out of the bottom of the fridge. As you can see, I've freed uh, the capacitor, and it's now loose. I've also uh, cut off the AC lines that feed it. I've left them nice and long so I can wire it up again. And also I've cut the uh, high pressure and suction lines free. So everything is now ready for me to uh, lift this out, which I'll uh, do right now. The compressor is now out of the fridge and uh, ready for step number two, namely get it hooked up on the workbench and uh, test it. So we'll get on to that part. It took about ten minutes to get the uh, compressor right out of the fridge and up and onto my bench. And it didn't take much in the way of tools to do this either. All I needed was a small vice grips, a uh, quarter inch nut driver, a yellow 32 teeth per inch hacksaw blade, 
and a little 7 uh, wrench to undo some quarter 20 hardware. That's all it took, that and uh, pliers to uh, cut the red and white wire. Well, the next step is I also recovered the line cord from the fridge, so I'm going to uh, hook it up to the uh, red and the white wire, and then uh, this compressor's going to be fired up in a minute. Here I've hooked the line cord back up to the uh, compressor's two wires. This is, of course, a uh, 120 volt setup where I am in Canada. So I've hooked the uh, white compressor lead to the neutral, the red I've hooked to the hot, and uh, the ground, the green wire from the line cord, I've hooked to a clip lead, which is uh, hooked up to that quarter twenty screw on the top of the compressor uh, that used to hold the evaporator pan. This compressor is uh, made in the USA, by uh, Americold, evidently. So it should be another good compressor, not one of these cheap Asian imports. My uh, first compressor, which is just over to the side here, is a Matsushita made in Japan, so it's pretty good too. Hopefully this uh, Americool unit is going to start up for us in a moment here. Well, I'm all set to plug it in, so let's go for it. And we immediately have a working compressor. Excellent. I was pretty sure it worked when I got the fridge, and uh, this proves it. This thing has a good flow, too. I think it actually might uh, pump more mm, cubic feet of air per minute, or maybe cubic inches per minute with these little compressors. But this one seems to have more flow than uh, my Japanese Matsushita. I'm happy with this already. Oh yeah, if I stick my thumb on the suction, I'm getting uh, getting a good uh, good suction. Yes. Okay. So that's step number two successfully completed. We have a working compressor wired up on the bench. To get to a high pressure air system from here, we just need to do uh, a few more things to our now completely working and good compressor. Refrigeration compressors often have a uh, very special type of lubricating oil in them that has to be able to not react in any way with the uh, the Freon type refrigerant, so it's quite a special oil, and I've heard that it often doesn't react well to uh, air and the humidity in the air. What I normally do, what I did with the uh, Matsushita, and what I'm going to do with this compressor, is I'm going to remove the suspect refrigeration oil by simply putting the unit on its side and draining the unwanted oil out of it, and I will replace the unwanted oil with an equivalent amount of this uh, air compressor oil for normal air compressors that I have in the little half-liter bottle in front of the compressor. I've gotten a bunch of stuff uh, ready here to add to the compressor so it can be useful as a uh, high pressure air source. At the back here got a couple of pressure gauges. The one on the left is a 0 to 400 psi. The one on the right is a 0 to 4000 psi. Although I won't be getting anywhere near a 
4,000 PSI out of a fridge compressor, but, uh, you know, you can get seven, eight, nine hundred pounds out of some of them. The, uh, copper and brass pieces here are to, uh, make up a manifold. I've got an eighth inch long piece of, uh, half inch copper pipe with, uh, a pair of quarter inch holes drilled in it to one uh, about an inch and a half in from one end, one about two inches in from the other end. In front of that I have a uh, quarter NPT coupler in brass on the left. This uh, matches the quarter NPT threads on the pressure gauges and will be used to mount the pressure gauge to the top of the uh, copper and brass manifold that I'm going to make. The next piece in uh, adapts a uh, quarter NPT to uh, half inch copper. So it will be soldered in to one end of the copper pipe and the uh, adapter to its left will be screwed onto it and the pressure gauge screwed in to the adapter giving me a pressure gauge on the top of my manifold. The third brass piece is simply a uh, brass plug for half inch copper pipe. It'll be soldered into the other end. The two short pieces of quarter inch copper tubing one of them's going to go to the uh, pressure out from the compressor, and then the other one is going to have a uh, air chuck assembly eventually put onto it, so I can uh, have a high pressure hose and air chuck attached to my uh, new high pressure air system. So let's just hand fit this little thing together before soldering it and see what it looks like. From the parts I showed a moment ago, I've now uh, fitted the manifold together. It's not soldered yet, just a trial fit. Like I said, I cap off one end with the brass plug. Pressure gauge and its adapters go on the top end. And then I have a uh, one... Uh, quarter inch copper line. It will slip right onto the 3 steel output line from the compressor and I'll solder the two together. This other one will be my high pressure out. I will adapt the end of that onto a uh, high pressure hose and uh, air chuck. The manifold has now been uh, fitted together. Flux has been applied to all the areas I'm going to solder. And I'm now going to solder the manifold together. The manifold has now been uh, soldered together. I'll allow it to cool, clean it up, and I'll be able to move forward on uh, putting the compressor onto a small wooden base, providing an on-off switch and doing the final wiring to the compressor on its base. Then I'll attach the uh, manifold that's just been made up here and pressure gauge and uh, also set up the uh, high pressure hose and air chuck. Here we can see the manifolds built. Pressure gauge is uh, now just loosely threaded onto the top of it. I haven't used thread tape or thread sealer yet. And the manifold has been uh, slipped on to the compressor's 3 steel output line. There'll be a uh, solder connection here to hold the uh, manifold onto the steel line. Let's take a closer look there. Yes, this will be soldered right there when the time comes. But first I'm going to build a uh, wooden base for this unit. And uh, from the fridge 
I recovered the uh, mounting plate for the compressor, so I'm going to reuse it on the uh, wooden base that I make up for it. Here's another step done. I headed out into the woodworking shop and uh, I quickly made up a wooden base. It's about three and a half inches tall and uh, outside dimensions are thirteen and a half inches square. I took the uh, steel mounting plate that the compressor was on and I've screwed it to the top of my uh, compressor mounting uh, box. So now I can sit the compressor on here and uh, it's a little bit more ready. The compressor's now on its wooden base, mounted by its original steel mounting plate. So this gives me the benefit of keeping the uh, spring and rubber anti-vibration feet that were on the compressor. Keeping them should allow it to be pretty much silent in operation. The compressor's now on its base. The manifold is fitted to, but not yet soldered to, the high pressure output line. I haven't neatened up the suction line yet, it's sticking way up into the air there, uh, off to the right of the compressor. I'll neaten that up, and also put a uh, filter on it so the compressor can't suck uh, shop dirt and dust in when I'm using it once it's built. I also need to add uh, an on-off switch for it, which will be done. and. Uh, then uh, all I'll have to do is add an air hose to the output of the manifold. So this is coming along nicely. The manifold has now been soldered to the compressor's output line, and it's also had a little uh, attachment post made for it out of a couple of uh, Home Depot L brackets and a piece of uh, aluminum square tube scrap. Let's take a better look here. Uh, here's the soldered connection. Last one I had to make from the steel line coming out of the compressor to my uh, copper manifold. Also, as can be seen, uh, I put a little piece of rubber in between the copper manifold and its support post just for vibration, and then everything's attached together with a couple of tie wraps that can be seen if I zoom out a little bit. That holds everything together and the rubber will help with any vibration. Here's a better angle look at the uh, post I made to support the manifold. Just two L brackets and uh, I happen to have a handy piece of metal. Uh, could be a piece of wood there too. Either will work. I wanted an air filter on the suction side for this compressor and I found a uh, small paint roller that uh, would just slip onto the end of the uh, suction tube. It's uh, made of foam. Air will pass through it and it will act perfectly like a dust filter for me on the intake side. It's a good idea to put some kind of a filter on the intake side. Here I've just added a uh, on-off switch to the compressor. You could of course run it just by putting a plug on its uh, power supply uh, lines, but it's much more convenient to have an on-off switch, so I added a little electrical enclosure, and I have a uh, 
SPST toggle switch wired in. My switch is rated at 15 amps and uh, the maximum draw of the compressor will want focus here. Yes, if the rotor's locked, it'll draw a maximum of 10 amps. So my uh, 15 amp rated switch is going to be fine for this compressor. So I'll just put the last little cover on and then it'll be ready to be uh, tried out with its uh, switch. The on-off switch is finished and the compressor is now uh, ready to run. The last thing that needs to be done to it is of course I've got to add uh, an air chuck to the uh, output of the manifold right here. Then it'll be finished. This will be my first try at building any pressure with the newly built compressor. I'm just going to put my thumb over the uh, output tube to block it and see if uh, the compressor will build any pressure. Okay, my thumb's losing its grip. But we built nearly 200 PSI there uh, very quickly, so that's uh, encouraging. It seems the unit's good. Continuing to work away on the uh, output, I've now uh, soldered on an adapter in brass to the uh, high pressure output so that I'll be able to uh, thread on a uh, coupler. As soon as things cool down, I just soldered it. The uh, output coupler is now uh, attached. It means this project is pretty much finished. I brought pressure up to uh, about uh, 100 PSI and then shut the unit off. It seems my uh, coupler seals up well and I don't have any uh, leaks in my soldered or uh, threaded connections. Now in every uh, threaded connection I made here, I uh, used gasket sealers for automotive and I also used the uh, white thread tape. So I used two things to seal up uh, my two threaded connections near the uh, pressure gauge. No leaks that way. I've had the uh, pressure around 100 PSI for about 15 minutes now and the needle's not budging down. So I'm pretty happy with this new uh, high pressure air system. I've now added the air chuck and uh, got everything fitted so my 48 inch high pressure hose can uh, clip on to this compressor. Much like this. Here is a look at the uh, finished high pressure air unit. Here I have a solenoid valve air cannon based on a fire extinguisher tank mounted on my pedestal mount and I've hooked up the new high pressure air system to it. So the final test in this video of how to make up a high pressure air system from a refrigerator is going to be uh, actual firing of uh, an air cannon from this newly made high pressure air source. For this test shot I will bring uh, 
pressure up to 300 psi. I'm using a uh, hard cast alloy caliber 812 lead slug. The target is going to be a 2 liter pot bottle filled with water and frozen solid. Here's the target, and I'm just about at 300 psi, so I will be firing the test very shortly. Actually, I'll make it 350 psi. And we're at 340 and climbing. Just about ready to fire. Three, two, one, fire. <laughs> 